Welcome to the Real Life Group's Leadership Podcast, a conversation about creating small groups where people grow in spiritual maturity in relationship. We're focused on you, the small group leader, giving tips and tools to help you lead effectively. Well, I want to welcome you back. My name is Chris Short, and we're just super excited for today's conversation. And today we get the opportunity to sit with Corey Spear, our North Campus Groups Pastor, among a lot of other things, and Dre Bloomer, one of our women's discipleship leaders at our Post Falls Campus. And today's topic we're super excited about because we think it'll help in every season, but we're talking about five keys to starting well. It's how to start a group well, how to kind of kick off or maybe even restart, re-kick off a group. And we've been praying about this conversation, just super excited about how it's going to come together. Mm-hmm. And so I thought it'd be kind of fun way to start is just to talk about your first group experiences as we kind of dive in. Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll start with mm-hmm. you, Corey, kind of your first group experience. How, how was that? Yeah, so I didn't know exactly what to expect to go into uh, an environment that I didn't know. Um, I did. I wasn't invited into a group by somebody personally, so uh, took a risk. Melissa and I went to it, um, and we didn't get in a necessarily. We didn't necessarily get set up really yeah. well in it, and not to diminish the leader because they were fabulous people. Yeah. But I just didn't know exactly what to expect to mm. go into that. I, I, yeah. I tried on the front end to actually read. I thought I would get in my mind, so I'd read the Bible before I got there so I could measure up to people. So I didn't know what the expectation was. Of course, I got through about three chapters in Genesis and I thought, man, I'm not going to get this done. (laughs) What if I go into this environment? I don't know what to expect. Do they expect me to know the Bible? Yep. So that's kind of how I went into it. Pretty nervous. Um, Thanks for sharing that. So so you're going, came to a group, didn't really even know what to expect. Um, just kind of started and, and figured it out as you went. Yeah. Right? Perfect. How about you, Dre? What was your first experience in a group? Well, I was invited to a women's small group. Yep. And unlike Corey, I knew the whole Bible well. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. I sense and the so, sarcasm here. Okay. <laughs> very much sarcastic. <laughs> but I really did think that, wow, I can come into this group and fix yep. everybody's problems and it would just be amazing. And I wouldn't I didn't even know if we ever had to go back again after the first week. It was yeah. going to be incredible. So good. Yeah. yeah. So so you already kind of went into it, but you had yeah. relationships. That was a little bit different. Yep. But I think it seems I like did. for both of you guys, mm-hmm. part of it would have yeah. been that expectation gap a little yeah. bit of, okay, what are we going to do in this group? What's the format? Um, and that's always an unknown for everyone. Mm-hmm. Every scary. Every church does it different. It can be scary the unknown relationship for you, not knowing those people in the group. Yeah. So we kind of start with that, you know, starting a group is always kind of hard because mm-hmm. um, everyone brings in their own expectations mm-hmm. as you kind of mm-hmm. start in that group. So let's talk about this a little bit as we think about uh, groups starting every group season, maybe it's a restart, maybe it's that kind of that January season where there's a restart kind of of a group. Um, how, how do we see groups doing kind of collectively, Corey? What, how do our groups that you've experienced and, and overseen, how do we do starting groups? So I, th- I think if I hear you ask the question, how well do they start? Yeah. 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 Um, as long as I got to serve in this role, oftentimes the groups will have more of a slower kickoff. Okay. And I think we live in a culture this in North Idaho that we only get a certain amount of time Mm -hmm. of weather. And so when people have soccer and sports that they're trying to finish up in the season with their kids, our fall launch oftentimes will be kind of a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a people kind of start to trickle into it if you have an existing group. And then by the time you hit the mid October, you know, everybody's pretty much connected and involved in that there has to be a better way to like help them help us as leaders really yep. kick that off well. So I hear you saying one of the challenges is that um, people trickle in to get mm-hmm. into that group, especially like if it's the fall, they might take a few weeks. Maybe they're new to church and they're not sure if they're ready for a group yet. So they might be there might be three or four or five weeks, maybe even all year. There's there's some groups that people trickle in throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So like, when does it officially start? So that's a part of it. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of a problem that we have to deal with. Dre, what else do you see as we kind of kick off groups? What are other problems or challenges that you've seen? Well, I think what is really uh, good to remember is you're never going to get that 
first day of group back again Mm, and to really be an intentional leader and go into it with that mindset. Like whenever that group decides to kick off, let's Mm -hmm. do it well and intentionally. And looking back at the group I was connected to, even though I thought I was going to fix everybody, um, (laughs) it was modeled to me by the leader that, hey, you're not here to fix people. In fact, it's okay not to. We want to build relationship first. And so they were very intentional about modeling relationship first Mm -hmm. and in that that provided that environment where um, being vulnerable and transparent started to happen and which helped me then grow spiritually which is yeah so so you got to experience a little bit of modeling which was really Mm -hmm. healthy and kind of the best picture of we really want to establish relationship we're actually Mm going to talk about this kind of environment yeah which again i'm super excited to kind of hear what are some of these key Mm -hmm. pieces but before we do that Corey, anything else why does it matter that we start well why does it matter that we we do kind of have an intentional strategy to kick off groups? Well, I, I look at what God can do mm. in that season as we do relationship together. Yep. And I think that's a major component of why we're there. As we're, as we're as we're growing in relationship with each other, God's doing something really special within us mm-hmm. yeah. that He's changing us and growing us in our maturity. So I think yep. that's the foundation of you know why we do it. And that should be almost the vision of why we're getting together. I love it. Mm-hmm. So, and I think you're hitting a piece that's just so big to kind of the behind the scenes, what people are thinking mm-hmm. about when they sign up for a group or when they get invited to a group, the why would I actually come to a group yeah. comes down to I, my life is going to change. I'm going to grow. That's good. I'm looking for a relationship. All these pieces go into it. Again, sometimes there can be extreme expectations that people have. Maybe it's like, these are going to be my deepest, best friends for life. And it's like, okay, well, that might not be here. Mm-hmm. Or or if we're going to study the Bible for five hours, that could be maybe mm-hmm. a different extreme. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so we, they come up with different expectations. So we're going to mm-hmm. kind of set some key kind of five keys mm-hmm. to starting well that we've seen over time with different groups, some of the trainings we do and summarize that obviously in this time slot. So we're going to kick into that a little bit and kind of move into what are these, I'm, I'm excited to hear mm-hmm. from your guys' vantage point. What are some of the the most important five keys to starting a group well? Maybe Dre, kick us off. I think in my, looking back at my experience and moving forward, just the importance of building that relational environment is a key piece. Um, And then that provides that biblical foundation to be built. And that relational environment, um, like if they would have started out with just uh, running through the guidelines and the yes. guidelines to me i thought of this this morning when jim talks about 10 commandments and how they're really those guardrails for relationship with yeah, god and how good. valuable that is yeah that's those guidelines yeah that's great and if they use those and model those in relationship it creates that opportunity yeah. uh, to build those relationships and therefore growing mm. spiritually in, that's huge in that group yeah, and i think the really thing, I mean, you just captured two yeah. huge things mm-hmm. again these are things that we dive into with training so we're not going to be all encompassing here but you just talked about mm-hmm. a relational environment mm-hmm. and a biblical foundation yeah. and without those two pieces and the, again those are kind of those two guardrails we're always talking about mm-hmm. it has to be in relationship yeah. but we're studying the bible we're here to grow in yeah. spiritual maturity in relationship that these two things they have to be where we start right so we need these elements and a group as it kicks off, needs to know that these things matter. You know, yes, we're here to build relationship and yes, we're to study the Bible. So that kind of starts off this, these first of the two five. How about you, Corey? What's the next couple that you see? Um, You know, having somebody that can intentionally invest and create an environment that is relational, that is solid, grounded in God's word, that has the ability to take people along this journey. Hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So a relational environment can be a great setting. It can be a beautiful home. Mm -hmm. Right. It can have all the foundation what it is. But if there's not an intentional leader to help us connect, man, we we missed the mark. So good. And even just Jesus is a picture of that. Right. He created a relationship. Yep. But he did it intentionally. It wasn't just like, hey, we're just hanging out. Like he actually gave us that picture. Yeah. yeah awesome. I actually got to be a, a, a cabin leader this this last week at wow. summer camp. Yeah. And I had nine nine students there. And I thought, I want to really lead them through this devotional time. And I thought, where could I take them? Yeah. Like, where would be the ra- relational environment? You know where we picked? What? We picked a stump. We all s- sat on a stump <laughs> and they sat on a log. 
it, it wasn't this great place, mm -hmm. but the conversation that took place mm -hmm. because we used God's word that was yep. grounded in it. Yep. And we had somebody that was intentional about asking yep. them where they're at. So good. So, so far I've heard, you know, this, uh, we start with a relational environment, biblical foundation, an intentional leader. Mm -hmm. What else? Then we have to have this process where we, yeah. where we go from a, a place in our walk with Jesus to grow in our spiritual maturity. Yeah. We call it the, um, the reproducible process. Yeah. We're all in this journey walking with Jesus and we're all in different stages of our growth. The goal is to grow Yep. to trust Jesus in mm -hmm. spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. So as we're in this, an intentional leader is learning and growing and building relationship with the people in their group and understanding and meeting people right where they're at in their walk. I love it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's huge. And I think that this is a great picture of just, you start on this journey, you set the right boundaries, yep. you're taking them on a discipleship journey. Exactly. Right? That we're not here just to, to meet, this isn't just a club, a small group has a purpose and intention. Yep. Any thoughts on that, Dre? Just on the idea of the reproducible disciple making process? I think if it's not reproducible, then um, as we lead, we're we're mm. not going to allow, mm -hmm. um, create places for other people to play and yep. step up in leadership yeah. if it's not, doesn't have that key element. Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. again, show up to group, do your part, listen. Yeah. It's almost like yeah. a, it's a small version of showing up to church on Sunday. Yep. And that's not the purpose we wanna create. Mm -hmm. So let's get practical for a second and talk about some specific examples of what it means to be kind of an intentional leader, mm -hmm. living out this disciple making process, you know, like in the time we have in a group, what are some things that you've seen, Corey, that we would actually do to walk a group through some of those components? Yeah, so Dre mentioned something earlier about having some safe guidelines to build relationship. Yep. Um, I've been in some environments mm -hmm. um, where like they go through the structure of the guidelines and and it didn't feel very relational. It, yeah. it almost felt like I had to stay in check in an environment that yeah. if I did all these things wrong, then I wouldn't be accepted. Yeah. I think an intentional leader will walk through this guidelines to build a bridge of relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So when we take the time to go through that, make them feel safe, mm -hmm. make them feel like they're gonna be a part of a spiritual family, where they can welcome other people in. It's like, you've got to be a part of what we're doing here. It's yep. amazing. It's good. I love so it. So setting some safe guidelines yep. for them. And oftentimes I'll go through a whole evening. Like I'll spend the whole evening on our, our launch, mm -hmm. just establishing because I've got new believers in there that are just scared to be in there. Yep. And then you've got maybe some over talkers and other people that have been walking with Jesus, yep. but the reality is when we all come to that place of feeling like we're safe, yep. that's huge. Yep. So I, I hear mm -hmm. you saying, I think this is really a great picture of how to be an intentional leader mm -hmm. related to creating this environment mm -hmm. is you're actually slowing down, not just racing through yeah. that. You're setting the vision we talked exactly. about. Why do we do what we're doing? Why do we meet? Okay, what's some healthy boundaries, you know, like these guidelines that give us you know, a way to actually have a conversation, not over talking. We've had a previous podcast on that you can listen to. Um, but how to have these right kind of guardrails so that we can actually be intentional with our time. Yep, yep. So exactly. Good. Well, so this has all been super good. And I think, you know, so far I've heard, just reiterate, um, establish a relational environment, build on a biblical foundation, be an intentional leader, live out a disciple making process. Dre, what would be the, the last, the fifth of these five keys? I would have to say to remember as a leader that uh, your group isn't just a group Mm. out in la la land somewhere that's but you're good. part of a bigger church that's good and a body yeah. and so uh your group reflects that and it's important to we have a lot of resources um mm -hmm. each campus has a group's uh team yeah and they are coaching and providing resources yeah. like we have a leadership resource guide that has mm -hmm. lots of great examples of good questions. It uh, it's got the guideline. It's got tons of resources in it. Yep. Uh, those things are really important. We've got 301 coming up and that's really our playbook for leaders. Yep. Um, we do it every year and uh, mm -hmm. I feel like it really equips and helps us stay the course well. Yep. And that's important. Yep. It's so yeah. important. Yep. Well, and I think what I hear you saying is really just the main emphasis of this last one is that we're aligned with the church as a whole. Yeah. Because yep. because individual group is um, on their own independent. But as a larger body, we're, you know, this this collective that 
uh, does amazing things. Yep. It's the movement of what the church is that what Jesus did in creating this amazing picture, this you know way to reach the world is he gave us the church, not just an individual group. Yes, That's we're exactly a part of the right. church. He gave us the church yep. and that we get to play a part in that. So kind of as we're kind of wrapping up, you know, there's so many things we could be doing with this. And I love what you said, Dre, the, you know, we have, support every every campus mm -hmm. has a groups team we have trainings every year we do a 301 there's all these different resources that we have that are supporting you know um we're not just a uh, individual group we're a collection of groups um corey kind of any last thoughts of like you know encouragement to leaders next steps yeah i would say just don't get discouraged yeah you know when it. when you start off we 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 try our best to plan out yep. right and be intentional and then there's kind of highs and lows throughout the season. Yep. You know, we have a kind of a soft launch that we're really trying to bring people back in. Whether you're in a new group and trying to form a relationship, that's yep. going to take some time. And then about the time you hit Christmas, you know, things kind of back off a little bit. You might feel like you're, yep. dip, you know, you're not a good leader because the attendance. Yep. Those are good times to maybe reboot. Yep. Have a potluck, have a barbecue, have a fun time regather yep. and as we're doing this you get new people that are coming in and it's okay to walk them yep. right back through feeling safe and and part of that yep. it's almost like a reboot i see i see the apostle paul do this many mm. times yes right so all of his letters that he's encouraging yep. in the epistles he'll go and say man i i really desire i miss you i love you i can't mm. wait to see you again but I think Paul was really intentional about doing a reboot to encourage and keep them on track. Love it's that. Really and I think that's a, that's an awesome way to kind of wrap up today is that, you know, while our focus today was on five keys to starting a group well, um, you can restart and you can reboot your group at any point. Yep. You, know, you could look at all these different things and maybe be discouraged and go, man, our relationships in our group are a little weak. Well, you're the leader, you know? How do you go, let's have some, let's take a week to have a potluck. Let's have a game night. You know, if you're struggling with that biblical foundation, it's like, hey, you know, we're going to we're going to actually dive deeper into this, you know, book of the Bible for a season. You know, yeah. you can evaluate where you're at as that intentional leader looking at all these five things, uh, relational environment, a biblical foundation, an intentional leader, a disciple making process and church alignment. And that we really can at any point, you know, achieve that vision that God's given us mm -hmm. as far as our groups go and our church. Well, thank you guys for being a part of this conversation. Super Thanks helpful. For us. You know, really hey, awesome to hear. A, just yes. one more thing. Go ahead. Um, Corey, I'm glad you brought up the word fun mm. because sometimes I, I'm a very much an overthinker. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's just can be a curse sometimes. Oh. But to just bring their own personality, especially in that kickoff time. Yeah. Um, and make it fun. Yep. Yep. Uh, especially that first time getting together, potluck, yep. uh, games, whatever that looks like. Uh, that yeah. just breaks down walls. And it is so important, Dre. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was such a serious leader at times. It's like, man, we got to be yeah. transparent, and vulnerable. And all those things are really good. Yeah. I had to really wrestle with a statement that Evan Meske said when I first came on staff. He goes, whatever we do, we also have to have fun. I'm like, yeah. no, no, <laughs> no, let, yeah. let's, let's be intentional. And he's like, no, yeah. I don't want to be in an environment that's not fun. Yep. And that's really changed my mind and my heart. Love that. It's like, I want to have fun. I want to yep. I want to be in relationship and do life with these people. And enjoy and doing it, right? life yeah. means yep. you get to have fun. Yep. yep. And I think that's a great way to. Yeah, that is a huge piece of just to bring this all together. We want to enjoy and do life with people. And that without that piece, you know, why are we doing it? Yeah. Right? Yes. We want to grow. We want to do it in relationship. And uh, that's so good. Thanks for that reminder as we close. Um, and also want to tell you, uh, leaders that are listening to this, we just want to thank you for all that you do in our community, in our groups. A yeah. couple reminders. Uh, again, wherever you're at, you can start and restart your group. You can kick off with those with those vision pieces. Um, for all the different things we talked about today, show notes, check out realliferesources.org. And again, we're just so grateful for you and the investment you make every single week in our groups around our church community. And thank you for what you do. Yeah. We'll see you next time. We are grateful for the investment you make each week as you reach the world for Jesus one person at a time and make biblical disciples in relational environments. For notes from this show and other great resources to help you grow, visit realliferesources.org.